so much. 29. Uh, when uh, Donal O'Neill's father suffered a heart attack, despite being a fit man who never drank alcohol, Donal was baffled. So he decided to look at the impact of diet and now believes that everything he thought he knew about food is wrong. He undertook a high-fat diet while being monitored by doctors in his home of Cape Town in South Africa and filmed it all for his documentary, which is called Serial Killers. Let's have a look. So this is the first shot for the start of the food plant. So these are my secret weapon, uh, macadamia nuts. They're about 80% fat. I reckon macadamias will probably account for 30% of my total calorific intake. It's some frozen mixed berries. Uh, berries are very low in sugar. Nice leg of lamb. So I'll be eating uh, probably four to five hundred grams of meat a day, and of course eggs. Any research that I've done on eggs is resoundingly positive, and an egg is almost perfect food. I think the, um, the cereal companies probably pushed them off the breakfast plate. Eating between 20 to 25 a week. Well, that was a Donal. Donal O'Neill is here alongside Dr. Peter Bruckner, who's the Australian cricket team doctor who's adopted the high fat diet himself, also put the team on it as well. And joining us from London, Professor Alan Marion Davis, a public health expert at King's College. Good morning to you all. Well, uh, Donal, there are sort of two propositions really in your, in your program. One is that uh, a high fat diet is good for you, and also the cereals aren't so good for you. So you have about 20 seconds in which to explain that. Well, the message is don't fear fat. And as the, the research published yesterday, which has gone worldwide, confirms saturated fat has been vilified for a long time. My own father was a, an elite sportsman. It was my uncle. They went on to develop heart disease and diabetes, despite observing the prudent diet. And uh, I went on a journey to discover why that may have happened. I discovered I had some genetic susceptibilities. And I discovered that a high naturally occurring fat diet with a low carbohydrate content was protective. And uh, Peter can talk about the, mm. the medical facts behind that. But uh, Serial Killers is a, a personal journey. And yes, we, we vilify cereals. Nobody should be eating them. Um, Dr. Peter Bruckner, you, so you are the Australian cricket team doctor. You put yourself on this diet, the team yeah. on the diet. How has it affected you health-wise? Well, it's had very positive effects on, in both aspects. I mean, I, I, uh, I started the diet myself. I was uh, concerned that really for the last 30 years, you know, we've been uh, losing the war against obesity and diabetes. I mean, really, uh, the rates are, are increasing at a great rate. And it really coincides with 30 years ago, we adopted this low-fat diet. And uh, for the last 30 years, you know, carbs, have, uh, carbs have been the kings and, um, and, and fat's been out. And uh, the result of that has been disastrous in that we're all uh, the obesity, we're all got a, we're obese. And uh, it's a huge incidence of type 2 diabetes, which is a, a huge impact on the health system. So I uh, looked into this and decided that maybe things were wrong. I thought the best way to, to, to work it out was to try it myself. Mm. I went uh, low carb for uh, th uh, 12 weeks, lost 12 kilograms. Uh, very easily, eating very well, eating all the foods that our parents used to eat, you know, eggs and bacon and fatty meats and butter and milk and cream. And uh, ate loved my food and lost all this weight and uh, so the cricketers uh, noticed a fair difference between tours right. that I, had, uh, I was half the man I was okay. on the previous tour and, uh, and a number of them came up to me and said uh, you know let's uh, tell me about this diet right. I'd like to try it. Well let's test this with Alan Marion Davis in, in London. Morning Alan. Uh, so it worked for the Australian cricket team it appears and Donald says it worked for him having a fabulous time eating uh, saturated fat for 28 days is it advisable for other people? Well, it, the trouble is, it, it doesn't work for millions of people around the world. It doesn't work. Not, I'm not talking about this particular diet, but the, the whole notion of high fat and, uh, and a high sugar in particular it is, is a disaster. And that's what's causing so much obesity and so much diabetes and heart disease around the world. Uh, all, all the big international studies confirm that we should be eating less fat in general, particularly less saturated fat, and certainly cutting back on refined uh, carbohydrates yeah, like sugars what, well, and Donald had, Donald had no sugar at all. 
or well, which, which is good. That's a good thing. And that's what we should definitely be doing. We should be eating more fruit and vegetables. I like the idea of the nuts and the berries. That's good. More, more fruit and veg, more um, pulses and beans and peas. Um, and, and generally eating a, a, more, a more Mediterranean diet is what we should be aiming for. Less meat, uh, a little bit more fish. That sort of balance. OK, let's just pick up the thing about sort of cereals, including wheat, for example, um, Alan Marion Davis. Um, that, you know, provides fibre. We, do we or do we not need that in our diet? We do, but we, we're told us that so much of the, what we consume, especially in, in the processed foods, has, all of the fibre has been processed out of that stuff. So we do need the unrefined uh, grains and cereals and things, and those, those are good for you. And you mix those in with the fruit, and the fruit, etc., for your breakfast, and then you have a, a vegetable-based lunch with pulses and beans and things, and less meat than we normally have, and a little bit more fish, and that's a, an olive oil. I know there's controversy about that at the moment, but that, that's, that sort of Mediterranean diet is really what we should be trying to okay. get down to, and the Brits are a long way from that. Okay, Donald, you, you, you sort of form almost a, a sort of cereal conspiracy. You say that we eat so much, so much uh, wheat and, and bread and other products like that because of uh, the US government policy from the 1930s? From the 1970s when the, the food pyramid was created and uh, I mean the political and commercial motivations that drive grain-based products are almost unstoppable and even look at what, what happened week the man who re-engineered wheat in the 70s to save millions of lives in the third world countries he won the Nobel Prize Big Food looked at that they saw wheat that was producing more output per acreage they adopted it because it was cheaper. But that, what that wheat has done, it has um, impacted blood sugar levels globally much more dramatically than the wheat our parents and grandparents grew up with. Um, I wanted to just pick up, um, what because you went into this because of your, your, pet, your father, a uh, sort of genetic bias, which was going to give you what you thought a heart disease and diabetes. How did it change your physiology being on this diet? I gained muscle, I lost fat, and I only exercised for eight minutes each week. And I mean, the takeaway is, I mean, sh sugar comes in packets like that, and it's no coincidence that they look like cigarettes, in my opinion, because they're incredibly damaging. And th the real message is, eat real food. Okay. Peter, it, it, is it really healthy to, to eat only one kind of food and exclude everything else? Surely, I mean, it may work for athletes in the short term, but isn't a little bit of everything the best pattern. Yes, you don't completely, you can't completely remove carbohydrates from your diet, but we're all having far too much carbohydrates. And I certainly agree with, uh, with Alan that, uh, that the two big evils are sugar and processed foods. I think if we reduce, drastically reduce the amount of sugar and the amount of processed foods, we eat real food is what it's all about. We should get back to eating real food because uh, and, and this whole low fat movement, uh, the problem with the low fat is that when they remove the fat, you take away the taste. So what do the food companies do? They put sugar in. They mightn't call it sugar. They might call it high fructose corn syrup or something like that but there's sugar in all these foods and that's been disastrous for our health. Okay, and Alan Marion Davis is agreeing with you. Yes, yes. Thank you, Alan. And gentlemen, thank you both very I know, much. I know you're thank both you. endurance athletes <laughs> in an amateur sense of the word. So where we're going next is we're getting in bed with some elite world champions, including an Ironman who eats high fat, low right. carb. Okay. So we have Good. some tips for you. Thank you very much. I'm not into Ironman yet. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't say two miles a day is endurance either. Uh, you can watch the film online, Serial Killers Movie. Dot com, of course, you're much more of an endurance athlete. A triathlon, but not, not on, on the <laughs>